Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IV The After Years. Since last time, one thing I did was I went to the item shop. Uh, you can either do it at... I think you can do it at Troya, but uh, well, I, I usually do it at Eblon, where I stocked up on pretty much all the cheap status-curing items, because I have so much money, why not? Uh, particularly antidotes. You'll probably want to get a bunch of those. I mean, why not? They're so cheap, you can get 99 of them easily. So, now, we've pretty much gotten all the Eidolons that we can at this point in the game. That's... Oh, I'm not fighting these guys. I'm not going to go through two rounds of that. Are you kidding me? But anyway, so we've gotten all the Eidolons back that we can at this point in the game. So, we can pretty much advance the plot. Uh, it's, well, yeah, we can advance the plot at this point. But before we do that, I want to come over here to the Cave of Eblon to get some treasure. They've brought everything back. One of the few air optional areas in the entire game, actually. I mean, besides the challenge dungeon, obviously. But I mean, ooh, I can probably kill this guy before he can summon something. Usually I can't do that unless I get a preemptive strike. See, so yeah, in order to advance the plot, we got to go to Mist. Remember, we were being told to get all the Eidolons back when we went there the last time. But before we do that, we want to get some stuff here and put those small tails to use. I know you guys have been wondering, what the hell do all those small tails do? Well, we're going to find out. And I'm not going to go over every single use for them. There are many uses for them, but I'm just going to show you guys what I'm going to do with them. So... Love getting that tail. That's for sure. There we go. Whoa. Yeah, you gotta watch out for the summoners, because sometimes they can summon those arachnids. And, well, we don't have access to float right now, unfortunately. So, that's... Uh, you can take him out, Edge. Yay! Worry not, viewers. The game will get much, much... Harder, soon enough, for you viewers, soon enough. At this point, they're keeping the game pretty easy, so that way, if you didn't import data, or you didn't do every single tale, or whatever, or you didn't do the challenge dungeons, you'll still be okay. But after this point, if you didn't catch up on the characters you care about, <laughs> Yeah, the game will get much harder, worry not. Whoa, uh, kill him, kill him, kill him. Okay, this shouldn't hurt too badly. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. Okay. If he does that when he's at max HP, he will kill you. If you go over here, we can get the last small tail, number 21. All right. At least I think that's all the small tails you can get. I don't think you can get them as rare drops. Someone was telling me, H.C. Bailey, you can get them as rare drops. I don't think you can. I think they're just pulling my leg. But anyway, oh, there's a little, uh, little man over there. Yeah, check him out. Now, first things first, take out the Blood Eye, because he can, uh, charm you. Or confuse you. Whatever. Wow, the encounter rate tie. Okay, when you, uh, meet up with the summoner and you don't get a preemptive strike, you're not going to be able to kill him before he summons something and then goes away or whatever. That was an X potion. Sorry, I went through that a little quickly. So, yeah, don't even bother attacking the summoner if uh, you don't get a preemptive strike. Stay away from the summoner. Small tails, huh? Like mini metals? Not pretty much. But anyway, so you get a multiple of seven tails you can trade in. So let's go do that. Okay, there we go. Got the small tails. Now, you could get a rainbow tail, but I don't think so. You can exchange that, I think, for a limit ring. Later on, if I recall correctly, that lets you break the damage limit. But pretty much any attack that can break the damage limit already has that ability innate. So it's like, why bother? So I'm going to go for something else. I want to go for the red tail. Here. That's, that's one thing that I want to get. Now, what you do with these uh, small tails is, as you see, we're basically exchanging them for the rare tail drops that you could have gotten in the previous tales, but now we can 
actually just get them without having to go through the tedium of getting all those tails. So, so let's see, one more. Yeah, the uh, small tail, T-A-L-E, does nothing here, so don't worry about it. Uh, but anyway, we want to get two red tails and one white tail. It doesn't particularly matter what you get, really. The items you can get from them are not really good. But, well, I might as well. I mean, they're okay, but they could be better. There we go. So yeah, basically, just like the adamantites, the small tails can be exchanged for items in a future tail. So, but we can't do that right now. And uh, be very careful what items you exchange those small tails for, because there will be a tur no turning back point later on in the game, and you will never be able to come back. So, choose carefully. Unfortunately, you do kind of have to do or get all of that stuff now. You can't just. Um, you know, hold on to them and then decide later on now. So, yeah, it's kind of annoying. You gotta sort of plan ahead on what you want to use those small tails for. Which I've already done. So, yeah. Pretty much no way you're gonna know without a walkthrough, unfortunately. Oh, well. But like I said, it doesn't make a huge difference. So. But yeah, so obviously you exchange the tails in here. There's a little optional dialogue and stuff that goes on around here, so eh, I think it's worth it. Nice little optional area. Nothing too huge. It's one thing I really like about the dungeons in this game. Yeah, they make you, that you go through them a lot, but at least they're relatively short. So they're not like three hour long dungeons without a save point. Yeah, I've seen those before. Holy cow. Just like my last LP. Ooh, a Katetsu. If you didn't get one before, you can now. Hey, right, let's see what's going on at the Tower of Babel. Maybe we can break in there. Oh, yeah. What is that? It means we're being blocked by invisible plot wall. Yeah, sorry. Not happening this time. I think something like that happens in the original Final Fantasy IV after the uh, Tower of Babel starts glowing or something. You can't get back in there. I think. Can you? I forget. I've never tried... Uh, well, I have tried it before, but... It's been a long time since I've tried that. Oh. Uh, yeah, they did kind of want the crystals. What do they want with it? We're 70, almost 80 episodes into the game, and we still have no idea what they want with the crystals. Yeah, yeah, it's a long one. Uh-oh. It's an ambush! For boss time! Yeah, we even get a little optional boss here, too. So, let's just uh, go all out there. Um... Let's see, Man in Black, I want you to use one of your elemental spells here. Let's go with Firaga. And you... If I... Where's my... Ah, uh, oh, there we go. You didn't use Reflect. Okay, good. Oh, Firaga, he might cast Reflect. Okay, phew! Ah, uh, let's see, how are we doing? Yeah, let's... Let's go with Shiva. Yeah. Or not Shiva, uh, Sylph. Ow! This is why you want to use self. The uh, Marquis or Marquis Marlboro can uh, cast Reflect on itself. So, yeah, you're going to have to use physical attacks and summons. That's also why I wanted to use the Spider Silk earlier. Because, uh, you know, once it's got Reflect, you won't be able to get the slow effects through. He has some counter abilities, like Reflect and Protect, but uh, nothing I'm really worried about. Hooray! And I don't think Toad will work on him, unlike ordinary Marlboros, so... Alright, there we go. 
So we got the Kikuichi Manji, so let's put that on edge there. And there we go. I was going to say, I'm going to leave here and uh, try to use the tent to make it a waxy moon, but no, no I don't have to. All right. Now let's get out of here. Uh, emergency exits. And Edge, why don't you uh, heal everyone up there? You did a good job there, Radio, with Self. All right. Yeah, Self's not too bad in this game. I remember way back when I was a wee lad, I uh, I never really used Self that much. I never really thought about it as a single targeting spell that can pierce reflect and do some decent healing while you're at it too. And I also didn't realize that it basically cost zero MP in the original Super Nintendo version of the game because it was bugged at the time. But anyway, we've gone all over the world, gotten as many of our party members and Eidolons back as we can, so let's return to Mist. Uh-oh. It's gone. Okay, how's it going? Well, we still haven't gotten... Yeah, we freed all the Eidolons, except the ones that actually matter. Like Leviathan, Ashura, Bahamut. Yeah, yeah, all the ones that actually matter. Oh, huh? well, what did they do? I thought we killed all the summoners in the last game. Oh, except really obviously. Oh. Yeah, we can't summon Eidolons like you can, except that we actually can. Wait, what? Oh. I like Rydia's theme. The, the remix of it that we're using here. Aww. Who's there? You're too late! But anyway, for returning to Mist, we get the Dragon Summon back, which is a lot more powerful than it was in the original game. Still not that great, but it's more powerful. So, there we go. Well, all right, there's only one more thing to do, and this is the no turning back point, viewers. If you want to do something on Earth, you might want to do it now before proceeding onward with the plot. But can we defeat Cecil? Or, well, we don't want to defeat him. Can we stop him? Or, well, he's kind of under... Well, he's kind of not behaving like himself. Can we save Cecil? Find out next time on the finale of The Crystal's Tale on Let's Play Final Fantasy IV The After Years. This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.